about 1969, we decided to go back to New Zealand. We were in Australia. We went back to New Zealand and, uh, uh, oh, that's right, Maria was uh, expecting, so we had a, a baby. And um, so we're there and uh, at some stage, uh, we were downtown and Maria bumped into this old friend from art school. He used to go to art school with her and uh, we said, geez, Beres, what are you doing? And he said, oh, I've got this job for this multi-millionaire guy in the Bay of Islands and I'm caretaker of his island. And we said, wow, you know, fantastic. And he said, uh, but I'm thinking of leaving. And, and we said, well, Geez, if you do leave, let us know. And anyway, cut a long story short, he, he did contact us a few months later and said, yeah, no, we are leaving. Um, and I've made the arrangement for you to go over to the guy that owns the island, who lives in Auckland, where we were, um, and have an interview about the possibility of taking over. So we went to see this guy, Sir William Goodfellow was his name. We went to see him and, well, we got the job. I mean, basically, um, it meant that he didn't have to even bloody advertise it or anything. We were willing to take it, you know. And so um, we did that. And then Beresford let us know... Um, um, two weeks before he was leaving. So then we went up to the Bay of Islands with all our gear and he picked us up in a boat in Russell. Russell's about eight mile from out to the island. So Beresford picked us up in the boat, took us out there and uh, um, showed us the ropes, you know, like um, what what we had to do and, you know, like mow the lawns and plant trees and all that sort of shit, you know. And uh, it's about a 35 acre property and beautiful. Um, the old guy, Sir William, told me that he, when he bought it, he could have bought any, any island in the Bay of Islands in 1948. And he bought this one because it had a very beautiful beach, bay, and then a deep anchorage. And they were on, both on the um, leeward side of the island, uh, good, good, sheltered from the weather. And uh, so he, he bought it. Anyway, we went there and there was um, his house. He wasn't there, Beresford, was, the caretaker was there. So his house was at one end of the beach. Then they had a guest house in the middle of the beach and the caretaker's cottage, that's us, was up the hill a bit. And so, anyway, Beresford showed me what, what we had to do and all that, you know. Oh, and they had a boathouse, which they kept the, the launch in, you know. Anyway, um, so Beresford spent about two weeks with us, showing us everything, what we had to do. And uh, so that's okay. So Beresford leaves. So we're now on the island and uh, the, oh yeah, so William, then he would fly in in a seaplane. He, like not him, he'd be delivered. You know, a pilot would drop him off and uh, he and his wife and, um, uh, you know, a, a maid or someone would be dropped off and um, go into the house, you know. So anyway, he lets me know he's coming up. This is about um, three weeks after Beresford was there like he's gone. So anyway, the plane comes and I meet him and everything. We're walking around and he says, um, yeah, well, John, what have you got on today? I said, oh, I've got lots to do. He said, uh, well, what's so we go fishing? I say, yeah, sure, okay. Basically, I found out that my main job was to take him out fishing. He's an old guy, he's about 90, you know. That was my main job. You know, I, I, there were gardens to look after, you know, 35 acres or something. 
But, you know, um, hey, when he wasn't there, you could put your feet up and read a book and go for a swim and, you know, it was a pretty cushy job. Mind you, the pay wasn't that um, great. <laughs> Didn't matter. Anyway, um, so he says, OK, we'll get the boat down. So we go to the boat. Uh, uh, he puts the, the maid and his wife and that in the house and everything, and then we go down to the boat. It's got a big doors and ramp. So I'd been very um, fastidious. I'd cleaned the boat about twice and filled the fuel tank, you know, I'd bloody fussed over it. Anyway, we get in the boat and we come down the ramp, you know, I unhook the cable, you know. Next thing I know, I'm up to my knees in water. Shit. I'd forgot to put the bungs in the back. I totally freaked out. He was so cool, he just said, OK, John, OK, here's what we do. Get the motor going and we'll cruise around and the centrifugal, you know, centrifuge or whatever, um, force um, sucks the water out. It took us about an hour cruising around, 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 you know. Good first impression on the job, you know. Yeah, I know all about boats, you know. Anyway, so we'd do a lot of fishing, you know. He'd like to go out fishing. And, uh, yeah, so that was okay. And uh, except when he got really special guests, he'd have some high flyers had come in. And, um, and then he'd want to go right out. You know, about eight mile offshore, there was a reef. And he'd caught big fish there sometimes. And so, you know, I hated it because it was deep as buggery and the boat didn't have a winch and you had to pull the anchor up from really deep. And uh, also there was always a big swell out there and I was a really bad sailor. And uh, I'd have to sort of put it on one of the guests, you know. I'd say, uh, Sir William, I think Mrs. So-and-so is looking really green. You know, she's looking really sick. You know, the boat would be doing this, you know, in big swells. And he'd say, do you think so? I say, yeah, yeah. Finally, he'd relent and we'd go in. And the funny thing is, when you're inshore, you get much the same fish, you know. In those days, it was um, 69 or something. Um, in those days up there, the fish were bloody everywhere, you know. Maria used to go down off a point and just throw a hand line in and get a, a nice little snapper for dinner, you know. I mean, there were plenty of fish, you know. Anyway, uh, the other problem we had was sometimes he'd have a few guests, and particularly in, I think it was October, when the snapper would be running, uh, schooling. So you'd go out um, in the launch and there'd be, there's five people fishing, you know, like all these oldies about bloody 80 and 75 and that, and they'd all hook onto a school of a snapper and they'd be decent sized fish and the fish would be darting around the boat on the hooks and the lines would be tangled. It used to be a chaotic scene. All these really old people trying to wind in these quite strong fish, you know. Anyway, and then I, I wouldn't fish in those situations. It's just Sir William and the guests. And so we'd um, then come in and then, of course, the other problem was you've got all these bloody fish and who's going to clean them? John. So I'd be there until the dark hours cleaning and gutting fish. Anyway, so this goes on how long? Probably about a year. Then I get a, a message from Sir William. John, the Queen is coming. She will, the Britannia will be coming up to the Bay of Islands for the Waitangi celebration. And uh, the, the Queen and all the family will be uh, afterwards would coming out to stay on the island. And, uh, oh, okay. So the, um, where am I? I've lost track of where I am. So anyway, 
Oh yeah, he was very cool. He flew, he didn't, he didn't, he wasn't there. He flew in the night before in the seaplane with a big bunches of flowers to put in the house. And then he flew back to Auckland. So he was very cool. And uh, so next day, you know, like, what is it? I don't know, late morning, this bloody huge ship comes and anchors. It's quite deep water out where it was. They, 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 you know, they have depth finders and all that sort of stuff. And uh, they anchored. And then these two guys come ashore in one of those rubber type snappy boats. And these are security guards. And uh, okay, what's happening? You know, can you tell me what's this and what's that and all that? And I go, yeah, okay, well, this is happening and that's happening. And they said, what about that guy down the beach? There was a guy down on the beach with his family. He, he had a yacht and he had it moored, anchored just offshore. And he'd rowed ashore and he was on the beach with his wife and kids, you know. And they said, can you tell him to go? Well, I said, I can't. They said, what? I can't. If he's above the high water mark, if he's on the island, I can tell him to go, but he's down below the, uh, the high water mark and it's open. They said, oh, all right. They went down there. I don't know what they said, but the guy um, got in his boat and they left, you know. So that's that. And then I think, I, I can't quite remember what happened, but I think when they came ashore, they may have had a lading and waiting with them because I showed them the guest house and all that where the Queen and them were going to go and I think she stayed there you know anyway these two heavies come back and they say okay it looks all right so they go out you know half hour later uh, another a larger boat comes ashore uh, We've got a jetty too. So they come ashore and now we've got the Queen, the Duke, Charles, his sister, and one of these heavies. Um, so they come ashore and, you know, this is the Queen, uh, hi madam and whatever and all that. And uh, so, uh, and in those days, <laughs> I'd been living on the island for, you know, about a year or so. And the Duke actually said to me, how long have you been here? I, I just had shorts on and a piece of rope around my shorts and, and long hair and quite brown and all that. I, you know that film Treasure Island? I look a bit like Ben Gunn, you know. So um, the... Um, um, anyway, yeah, so the Queen and them, I just, you know... When I say I met her, I just nodded, hello, you know. And I mainly dealt with the Duke and Charles. Charles must have been about 20, I figured, but he looked a lot younger and acted a lot younger. He was like about a 15-year-old, you know. And so, um, oh yeah, no, I forgot. So the, before they went into the guest house, I'd arranged, they had a little bookshop, bookshelf, you know, just with a few books in. Well, I took out a few books and put in God, Man, and Listen, Humanity, and, and, you know, about four or five barber books. And then very subtly on their pathway down to the beach, I sprinkled a few of those Rick Chapman cards, Don't Worry, Be Happy, you know, you know. Maria thought I was nuts, you know. It was in those early days of when you come to Barber and you're a bit over the top, you know. What do they call it? The honeymoon period or whatever. So I was going for it, you know. Anyway, um, what happened then? Oh, yeah. So the Duke wanted a couple of other things. and well, he, Charles went with him everywhere, you know. And then I told them they could get oysters down on the rocks not not oysters like but rock oysters 
They were quite big ones. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so they went down and got some uh, Charles and the Duke got rock oysters. Anyway, so that's all set. They're all set. And um, late afternoon, the Duke and I see them coming up the lawn. We had a big lawn. And uh, they come from the guest house. They're coming up. Yeah, John, yeah. Oh, what's happening? And he, he said, well, we would like, could you make us a bonfire on the beach? Uh, this evening, we want to sit on the beach and have a bonfire and a barbecue or whatever. Yeah, sure, yeah. So I got all this wood, you know. It, it was like about that big. You know, it wasn't a monster bonfire. Anyway, I got all this wood and branches and some timber, you know. But there was one big plank. The big plank was about this wide and about eight foot long, you know. It was quite a big one. And I got some chalk and I wrote Maya Baba on the plank and I put it in, in the bonfire, you know. Anyway, so um, they, uh, yeah, okay, that's good. He had a look at it, went down, you know, they had the Duke and the child, you know, yeah, that's good. We'll sort it out from now on. You don't need to come down and we'll, we can do it, you know, okay. But I could, where from where we lived, you could hear them and, you know, singing she, she, what is it? Sea shanties and all that sort of stuff. And, um, and the, you know, obviously having a few drinks. But um, so, um, yeah, um, so that's the night. Oh, yeah. Um, in the morning, uh, they weren't there. What I figured, they must have gone back onto the ship to sleep the night, you know. So, um, so basically, that's the end of story. <laughs> they got back on the Britannia and uh, took off. <laughs>